And it's like, man, man, my whole family's sick, amen? I'm praying for the people, amen? And I know God gonna heal them. Somebody else called and said, hey, man, we the musicians, amen? And, and we can't make it because we we were over and we, and we we did everything we can. Somebody else called and said, man, my truck messed up and I can't come. Somebody else called and, they, and I'm telling you, what happens is when all of that stuff happens, that means God got a blessing, amen? Y'all know what I'm talking about? God got a blessing with your name on it. See, most people, when they go through tragedy, they say, okay, it's messed up. I can't make it. I don't know what's happening. It's a, but when I go through tragedy, I realize that, oh, God is about to do it. Amen. Oh, I feel the blessing of God. You know what? I don't know if anybody ever had butterflies in their stomach. You know what I mean? And, and I don't get them all the time. But every time God used me in a mighty way, I get butterflies in my stomach. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm letting you know today I had butterflies this morning. Amen. Amen. It was some butterflies. And guess what? I know me on the shadow of a doubt that God gonna move in this place. Amen. Yes. I'm excited. I, 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 I want to say this because I don't ever want you to ever get discouraged when bad stuff happens to you. When bad stuff happens, that's a good opportunity for God to create a miracle. Amen. When bad stuff happens, that's a good opportunity for God to do something exceeding, abundantly, and above. Amen. How can God work an amazing miracle if we're not in a, a, a really messed up situation? So don't get upset. Say, uh oh, God got this thing. Cause see, you gotta realize who God is and the power that God has and the capacity that God has. God can do anything. Amen. Y'all hear when I say anything, I mean God can actually do anything. anything. Nothing impossible, nothing outside of his reach, nothing he can't do. He can do anything. Amen? Amen. And so because he can do anything, I'm praising an almighty, awesome God. Amen. Amen. How y'all young men doing this morning, amen? This afternoon, amen? They say thumbs up, amen? Hallelujah. One of them is his birthday today, amen? Amen. Praise God. We're going to celebrate. You know, they, back in the world, they said we're going to party like it's your birthday, amen? Well, in, 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 in the church, we're going to party better than it's your birthday, amen? amen? Give me a high five, man. Come on, man. It's your yes. birthday, man. Amen. I like that smile. You know what I love about him? I'm going to bless him, too. It's his birthday. Yes. You know what he did? He bought us some cupcakes. Amen. He bought, he, I saw him cut the cupcake. I thought it was somebody else's birthday. I said, oh man, whose birthday he celebrating? I thought he was celebrating Caleb's birthday, amen? Because her birthday last time, because see, we celebrate birthdays here, amen? Last time Caleb was in church, you know, it, it was her birthday in that meantime. So guess what we're going to do today? We're going to celebrate Keisha, and we're going to celebrate Caleb's amen. birthday. Cush on, amen? Yes. That's right, we're going to celebrate their birthdays, amen? And so I'm excited about it, amen? I'm going to tell you something else I learned. Man, you got to celebrate every day Amen. like it's your birthday. Yes. You got to celebrate every day. You got to praise God like you done lost your mind. I'm talking about, see, see, most people wait for the circumstances to be right. They wait for the situation to be perfect. They wait for everything to line up. But I'm telling you, I know this song. It's called, This is the Day That the Lord Has Made. We're going to sing that in a little bit. Amen? Amen. And God has done amazing, awesome stuff. Amen? Amen. Come on, we're going to bow our hands and we're going to pray. And we're just going to trust God and do some amazing stuff. Yes. Father, most eternal, amazing, awesome God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Yes. God, the enemy has come in like a flood all over the nation. Father God, the enemy has come in like a flood all over the globe. Yes. Father, Russia decided that they were going to attack and go in and invade the borders of Ukraine. God, they, they decided they were going to make some choices that could be, that could be, that could have effects all over the world. Yes. But God, even though the enemy makes choices, we have other choices to make. Yes. Just because the enemy made a choice doesn't limit our choices. Because our biggest thing is we're going to serve the Almighty God. We're going to trust in Almighty God. That doesn't change. Father God, we're not here to get on the United States side, France side, Germany side. God, we're here to get on the Lord's side. Yes, God. Father God, you didn't come to come to get on somebody's side and get somebody on side. You came to take over the battle. Father God, allow us in the midst of this to get in in, in sync with your agenda. Yes. What do you want for our lives? How do you want us to operate? Where do you want us to go? And Father, let us get in sync with your agenda and let the glory of God fall in our lives. Father God, we praise and magnify you, God. We glorify you, God. We magnify you, God. We bless you. You're awesome. You're good. You're wonderful. 
There is none like you, none above you. You're the only true and living God. Father, let somebody in here sick today, God. Let the healing power of the Spirit of God come and rush through this place, God. Father God, let your, let your spirit, God, saturate the atmosphere, God. From the top, God, all the way to the bottom, God. Let the spirit of God flow and let it flow strong. Yes, God. God, we thank you for a move of God. We thank you for the glory of God. We thank you for the awesomeness of God. We bless your holy name. It is in the awesome name of Jesus we pray, God. Let the word be rich. Let testimonies be powerful. Let us, God, get what you want us to get in this service on this day. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many people know that this is the yes. day that the Lord has made? Amen. Yes. You believe that? You believe that? Yes. Yeah, I see you with your hand up. You believe that. Amen. This is the day. Amen. Y'all ready for that? Yes. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Come on, say, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, say, glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, say, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, say, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, say, this is the day. This is the day. Come on, say, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Come on, say, I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, say, glad in it. Come on, say, this is the day. All right, come on. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, say this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his course with praise. Come on, say. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Come on, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Come on, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Come on, say he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Song. And I'm gonna tell you what I like in general. You got to be able in life to do a naked praise. Yes. Now, now what's a naked praise? See, a, 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 a praise, you know, I got some decent clothes on today, amen. They say I look better last week, amen. So I got some decent clothes on today, amen. But my point is, see, see, we get excited when outwardly we're blessed. But what about when everything falls apart? Can we still praise God? Amen. And see, and see, what about when the musicians can't show up? Can we still praise God? Yeah. What about when the drummer ain't here? Can we still praise God? Yeah. Amen. See, what determines your praise isn't, isn't all the other stuff and how you can do it when everything is coming together. But what about when everything falls apart? Come on now. See, MLK, he was a preacher, so I'm, I'm bringing a preacher in here this week, yeah. amen? He said that the true measure of a man is not how he stands in times of comfort and convenience, amen? But how he stands in times of com conflict and all that other stuff, adversity and bad, when everything falls apart, that's when you find out who the man is, amen? Yeah. That's when you find out who you are, amen? Because who you are going to come out. Yeah. You say, oh, I'm nice. But when things fall apart, can we still be nice? Yes. When things are crazy, can we still be nice? Yes. Now I ain't talking about we fall, everybody fall, but I'm talking about it consistently. Can we be who God called us to be? Amen? Yes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. You know, I love this song. And, and you know, I, I, I love to sing it with music, but I like to sing without music too. Amen? I think I done sung it more time without music. Amen? Amen. And it's just a, a simple little song that I love. Amen. How many people know God is good? Amen. Yes. God is good. And, and why watch the, the song itself? It says, Lord, you are good. And your mercy endure forever. Amen. Yes. 
How many people know that God is good? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing this song. Amen. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on. How long time to say that with me? Say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation, come on. People from every nation, it come. Mm. From generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah! 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 We worship you for who, for who you are. You are good, hey. You are good, hey. All the time and all the time. Come on. You are good. You are good. You are good. Amen. 
He had some adversity in his life. But I ain't worried about the adversity. I'm talking about the victory. I want y'all to hear the victory in this testimony. Amen. I want to hear you. I want you to hear what God is doing in his life in this testimony. Because God is doing great stuff in him. Amen. So without further ado, we're going to call this young man, Sean Harvey. Amen. Senior up here. He's going to tell us what, what God is doing in his life. Amen. He's going to give us what we call a testimony. Amen. Amen. Come on up and give us that testimony. Amen. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let the people of God say amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor, for having me. Oh, First Lady, your lovely wife. Amen. And everybody in their respective places. Um, my name is Sean Harvey. I'll give you a little background about myself. I'm originally from Sarasota. Grew up in a single parent household in a city. You know, you see a lot of things that come along with that. Uh, I told Pastor I'm only going to speak for about five or ten minutes. I don't want to hold y'all too long. So I'm going to fast forward until uh, when I went on. I went on to, to graduate from uh, high school first in my family, first to go to college. A lot of things and uh, goals that I set for myself coming from those environments. So moving forward, I went to the University of South Florida, you know, graduated from there. And that's when my life kind of changed. Things kind of turned. Or like the pivot podcast or the pivot in my life. Um, I have been going to the doctor for relatively about a year, getting checkups, getting physicals, and I was having some pains in my groin region, and um, the doctors kept telling me that all was fine, all was well. So at some point in my head, I started thinking that, okay, it's me. I went to the doctor 10, 3, 4, I don't know how many times. So I did my due diligence as a man. So I went later on that year, probably about September or so, and went to the doctor and a uh, female doctor, good doctor, so I'm getting my newly physical. I'm telling her the pains and the things that I was going through throughout the year. And she said, well, you know what? We feel a little something, so I'm going to send you to Tampa General to get it checked out. OK, no problem. So went to Tampa General, first time meeting this doctor, doctor and then he said, well, Sean, you either got some type of bacterial infection or you got cancer. I'm, I'm, I'm crying inside of this office. I'm like, and I'm praying that, or you know, you know what, I'll take that back. Not this time, so I'm, I'm praying that I hope I don't got cancer. I go and take the medication, I come back, and he tells me, Sean, I'm 90% sure you got cancer. Mm. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I exercise, I do football, play. I'm like, man, how can I get this? I just came from surviving the inner city, used to drugs and crime, and seeing my mama abused and all this stuff, and I'm like, I'm trying to be different. So I never forget. So I'm calling in this in this office, and I'm like, man, God, God, God. I always had a good relationship with God because things that I've been through, God has drawn me to him at a, a very young and early age, just like these young boys up here. So fast forward, the doctor, um, we end up going through doing surgery. They removed the tumor, and it, they came back and tested. It was cancer. So fast forward through that, God saved me from the first cancer. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to uh, Moffitt. Now I just graduated from USF where Moffitt is on our campus. Mm -hmm. So now I'm back at my alma mater. So my doctor there is called uh, Wade Sexton, who's my oncologist. He says, Sean, uh, if cancer's gonna come back, it's gonna come back within the first year. So I'm doing well, I'm planning this wedding. Me and my wife's about to get married. I'm doing good, all my PET scans, CT scans, everything is coming back good. I'm exercising, playing basketball healthy. So again, one of my PET scans, CT scans come back, that they see cancer in the region of my body, but they do a biopsy, they do tumor markers, everything is negative. So the doctors are like, man, we want to present this to the board because we don't understand what's going on. This machine is telling us you got cancer in the right pelvis and your lymph nodes, but my biopsy come back negative, so I said, well, I'm about to cancel my wedding. I ain't get married. You're going to have to help me. No, 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 Sean, don't do that. Go ahead and get married. Me and my wife went to Jamaica, come back. We'll retest you when you come back. So I'm like, okay, I'm trusting in God first, but I'm a, yeah, I know he let doctors and people yeah. put them on here for a reason. So I go get married, come back. They used the wrong size needle. Mm. So they did another biopsy, so came back. Now I got cancer that'll spread to my lymph node and my pelvis. Mm. So I'm like, man. So I got to start chemo right away, aggressive chemo. Um, the medicine that was giving me is some of the most strongest 
medicine that you can ever think of, like cis plat and the top of side. They come in with gowns and masked up and, and just bags over them so it can't get on their skin. So before I go there, I'm going back to my mom, who I told you about. My mom, mom seen a parent raise me. She's crying and she's like, I wish we could trade places. I said, Mom, I'm glad it's me and not none of y'all. I'm glad it's me and not any of y'all. You know, God had already built me up for this. God had already provided me. I said, y'all may quit, but God is going to see me through. So long story short, sometimes I get a little emotional about that. So moving forward, um, they start my treatments. I'm taking chemo for 40 hours a week, sitting in a green triage chair, probably like, if you cut this wall off, put a wall here, it's four of us. It was like two people in that corner, two here, and we were all getting chemo. I'm in a, a, a at Moffitt with people with terminal cancer, all kind of cancer. They used to joke, they'd be like, hey, young man, you kind of young to be in here with us. But God had me there for a reason. Not only did I see and meet a lot of people and gave me a new perspective on the life, yes. you got people with terminal cancer that's going to die. No, they're going to die. No, they can't be healed. Yes. But they're living life to the fullest. Mm. Live to my hospital every time I take treatment. I can't, now I can't walk to my mailboxes, which is no farther than about from that door to that door. So I'm like, man, now my mental capacity is starting to break down. My body is starting. I told my mom, I said, because at this time my wife still have to work, you know, we, 25, 20, I don't know, 26 or something like that. I, I can't remember the age right now. I'm 26 or something. So at that time, she still had to work. So we got mortgage and kid. So I'm like, Mom, well, I'm telling you now that when I go in here, if, if the doctor tells me I to continue treatment, I'm just going to let the counselor run this course and I'm done. Because at this time, I was mentally defeated. Hmm. Tired of going to my family, hospital, tired of getting the treatment. So I went into my oncologist and he said, the cancer is still, they got to continue. So I'm like, I'm, I'm not taking no more treatments. I, I just can't, I can't sit, I can't, I can't fathom to sit there and keep taking the treatment. I'm just too sick. So I tell you, God is good in that I can't remember how I end up taking that last round of treatments. But that was the only time, the only time I didn't end up in a Mafia hospital. When I was ready to give up, throw in the towel, quit, God said, Son, I got you. I'm the man. I got you. You don't have to worry about fighting for everybody else. So that was 2010 diagnosed. 2011 came back. 2012 beginning of my last treatments, and since then, not remission. Heal. God heals me. Amen. Every treatment, every, every, every test I get is negative. Every time I go out, it's negative. God has been amazingly, abundantly above all. But through it all. God don't allow stuff that just happened to us because we're, his grace and mercy is sufficient. It helped people in my family. Since me being the first one in my family to get cancer, my aunties had it, but she saw me that, okay, my, if God can do it for my nephew, Ooh, he, can I can, he can do it for me. Yes. My aunt, another one of my aunts, if he did it for Sean, he can do it for me. Yes. See, God knew what he was doing to his greater purpose for me to help yes. others. Jesus. And I told God this, and I'm not perfect by no means, never. You know, but I told God this, God, if you never let me forget that feeling I had, and any time somebody asks me to give my testimony, I'm running them. Yeah. I'm running yeah. you. Yeah. you know? So I want to thank you, Pastor Merritt, for inviting me and allowing me to share my story. I could have spoke 30 minutes yeah. about this, man, because there's yeah. so many things that happened, but I wanted to highlight it. Because, you know, sometimes we get up here and tell our testimony and it seems like, oh, I just prayed and God feels no. It was a lot of times I wanted to quit. A lot of times I wanted to stop. A lot of times that I couldn't go no more. A lot of the times I couldn't sleep. A lot of pain, a lot of suffering that went on to get this testimony. But you can't have a testimony without a test. So thank God for all of you, whoever's respect the places you are. This little girl here, she's going to be special. Amen. She's going to be great. Amen. Thank you guys for having me, and God bless you all. Amen. Amen. He was sharing that testimony with me, and I knew it had to be God that, that bought him. Almost killed the tower. Amen. Get what I'm saying? He had the tower in his hand. He was about to, and God said, uh, I got purpose for it. 
Can I tell you, and I want to remind you guys, you have to understand that you can't leave here because you got purpose. Amen. Y'all understand what I'm talking Amen. about? I was sharing with somebody, you know, one of the people from Mike Lake Wells, they were sharing with me their testimony, what they're going through. They got this thing and they got that thing. And, and they's like, man, the, the grandma is, is basically in a hospice. And they say, man, I might go before my grandma. Because all this stuff that's going on. I mean, th that's how the devil will have you. Amen? But I let them understand you got purpose in your life. You cannot be taken until your purpose is done on this earth. Amen? And so as long as you got purpose, you got life. Amen. As long as God got something else for you to do, I guarantee you're going to be around to do it. And you cannot die until your purpose is fulfilled. Watch this. You got to understand that sometimes God will literally let you go through something so that you can tell somebody else it's going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? That's, yes. that's crazy. But he will literally let us go through something just so we can tell somebody else it's going to be all right. And what we messed up as a church is that we cut our testimony service. The Bible says we're overcome by the words of our testimony. See, the testimony isn't just for everybody else. It's also for us. Yes. Because it reminds us of where we've been at, amen? It reminds us of what we're going through, amen? It reminds us to, to push forward anyhow. Because if God did it before, he can do, he it, can again. do it again, amen? Right. He's the same. He didn't change it. He didn't, he didn't somehow morph it to something else. God is the same God. Yeah. So God can do it, amen? amen. And so I'm excited about what God is getting ready to do, amen? amen. And so I'm going to sing this song and we're going to get it into this word, amen? Amen. Because it done made me mad. Amen. I want to go. If the devil doing something to you, I want you to put whatever that is right on this altar. Amen. amen. Put whatever that is right in front of you. And say, this means war. Amen. Yeah. You got to understand that we are not going to fall to the enemy. Amen. I don't care what he's doing, how he's going. Amen. We're going to win this battle. Amen. amen. Yeah. I got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got pain on my trail. But I'm seeing all this well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. Come on. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. Come on. Because this means war. Come on. How many people know what I'm talking about? This means war. Come on. Hey. Hey. I got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all this well. He's attacking every day. But I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. Come on, cause this means war. Come on, one more time. This means war. This means war. You know what our remedy is? Watch this. Come on, say it. I plead, I plead the blood. Come on, somebody say it with me. I plead, I plead the blood. Come on, hey, come on, say it. I plead, I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. I want to say this part. Say, you can't have my family. Come on. You can't have my family. You can't have my breakthrough. You can't have my breakthrough. You can't have my victory. You can't have my victory. You can't have my, you can't have my, you can't, you can't, you can't have my, you can't have my family. You can't have my family. I'm going to say it right. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. You can't have my breakthrough. Say you can't have my. You can't. You can't. You 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 you. Hey. You can't, hey. You can't have my family. Woo! I like that. You can't have. You can't have my increase. Ah, oh, y'all hear that? You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. You can't have my breakthrough. Come on. You can't have my. You can't have my. Woo. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. Hey.
And I, some, every now and then I look at the title. The title of this is The Fall of Jericho. If we had to take a thought for the day, it would be walls can't stop you from entering the promised land. Can y'all hear what I'm talking about? If we had to take a thought for today, it would be walls cannot stop you from entering the promised land. Every obstacle, every opposition, all adversity has to get out of your way because God has a path that he's trying to lead through. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? And so you got to understand that God is trying to do something. He's trying to move something. He's trying to tear down the wall. You know, you know, sometimes we, we, we have walls of, of racism in our life. Right? We have walls that say, I'm only going to deal with people that look like me and act like me. Yeah. And it stops us from being able to get to the next level that God's trying to take us. Right? Now, ain't nothing wrong with, y'all see me, I, I, I represent, amen? amen? Nothing wrong with representing who you are. I think it's crazy to get into society and just forget who you are and just try to simulate and become what somebody else is and forget where you came. Can I preach, Ron? See, see, you got to know where you came from, amen? Right. If you don't know where you came from, you'll never get to where you're going. Amen. See, you got a destination. See, you're coming from a trajectory. And if you don't understand that trajectory, you'll never be able to harness all that God got for you and become all that he has for you. So you got to know what you got on the inside. All the amazing stuff. Not what people tell you you are, but you got to find out for yourself, who am I? Where do I come from? Where my people come from? Sometimes I tell people, man, I know, you know, I, yes, you got some amazing uh, adopted parents, but you got to find out your own history. You got to go back and you got to do some research on your own history to figure out wh wh where I came from. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But that can't stop you from relating to other people. You, I'm going to tell you, there's a commonality in all of us. I'm, I'm going to say something that, that sounds profound, that, sound, that some people might disagree, but it's reality. Do you know that there's no real race? That's culture. But there's no real race, right? It cannot be scientifically proven. It cannot be scientifically broken down. I'm going to tell you how you know it. Think about it. When we start mixing and all that stuff, what do they call it? They don't even know how to do it. They came up with some crazy stuff. Uh, I forgot how many drops of blood or something. If you got one drop or something, then you're African American or something like that. That's, that's crazy, right? They don't know how to do it because it is about culture, it's not about race, amen? Because we are all a part of the human race. Because what we've done is we put up blocks and we put up stuff that say, y'all over there and we over here. But I ain't gonna never get on that side, y'all over here. No, all of us on the same thing because all of us are from the body of Christ, amen? And so that's the one I'm fighting for, amen? That doesn't mean that I'm not going, I'm going I'm to I'm represent my culture, I'm going to do all that stuff, but I'm going to make sure that everybody else should represent their culture as well, amen? Right. Care what culture you're from, you got to represent it. I don't care what family you're from, you got to represent it. I don't care where you come from, you got to represent where God brought you from. Amen. And you got to tell your testimony, God bought me from a mighty long way, amen? Amen. I don't know nobody that God ain't praying from a mighty long way. Amen? Amen. I mean, God by all of us from a mighty long way. We all have a testimony. Yes. You just got to be able to be able to look at it. And then I'm going to tell you something about the testimony. Stop telling the testimony until the test is over. Come on now. See, see, a lot of times you want to tell people your problem. That ain't no testimony. That's your problem. Amen? Amen. Right. So stop telling your problems to people. Amen? And start talking about the testimony. What's the testimony? The testimony I've been delivered. The testimony I've been set free. The testimony. He looking here says, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. If you look at the history of Jericho, Jericho was a city thousands of years before the Israelites showed up. Now, now, they was a city all those thousands of years, but they didn't always have the walls. Now, now, then they, when they got the walls, they didn't have them straightly shut up. See, you got to understand there's a reason why people put walls up. So now you got to deal with it. And so one of the things I want you to deal with, and I want you as individuals to do one thing, and that's meditate. Right? There's something in Joshua that said meditate day and night. 
But I want you to meditate because, see, a lot of people never try to get themselves better. I want you to reflect at night. I want you to reflect on the daily basis. How was my day? How did I do this? And then in the midst of all that reflecting, you're going to start identifying the thing that caused the wall to come up in your life in the first place. See, there's some stuff we got to deal with. We try to deal with everybody else. We try to deal with our environment. We want God to move mountains. But God said, I got to move the mountain in you. I can't move the mountain outside of you until I move the mountain inside of you. Amen. I want to tell the story about the storms. And y'all remember when it said, peace, be still. Uh -huh. So you got to understand, the first thing he said is peace. And he had to speak to your heart and your condition before he could speak to the outside. A lot of times the problem in our life is that we're trying to get God to speak to the outside, but he never dealt with the inside. God, give me peace on the inside, because if I got peace on the inside, it don't even matter that I'm going through a storm. Amen. Don't you know I've seen people go through a storm and they ain't even got a problem, they ain't got an issue, they ain't even feel, you can't even tell they're going through something. The only way you tell they're going through something is they, if they tell their testimony. Yes, yes. I would have never known that young man went through all the stuff he went through in his life until he told his testimony. When God gave him the testimony, he did it for a reason. Why? Because he knew that he was going to be able to handle it. Amen? I'm going to tell you something. God will never give you a trial that he don't know you can handle. Amen? God will never let you go through something that he don't know you built to do. Amen? God will set you up to be blessed. He never set you up to fail. I mean, feel like, oh God, set me up to fail. He, 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 he's challenged me. He, he's testing me. No, but not in a bad way. Tell you something. I've taught school for years, seven years, and I'm telling you, every you have, no, he don't have credit. One plus one is two. Come on now. And if he don't get two out of that equation, then he ain't getting right. Amen. He yeah. gotta get it right. Because if I don't hold him to a standard, he's not gonna be successful. Amen. Now, now, how did I become successful at teach? Because I never gave a test. Until I knew everybody could pass. Come on, son. Come on see, see, a lot of times what we do, we just gonna throw the test at the kid. You know you ain't teach the kid, right? And you're gonna just throw the test and tell myself, uh, they just ain't got it. No, you ain't give it to them, amen. But I'm gonna tell you what your father will do. I'm talking about the Father in heaven. He's gonna always give you everything you need to pass the test. Amen. So don't be worried about, oh, I ain't got no, oh, God gave me what I need to pass the test. God give me what I need to pass the test. God's moving in my life. He's gonna make me what I need to be, amen. God going to do it. God, oh, see, God already did it. Amen. All I got to do is walk into it. Yes. So I want to remind you every single day, meditate so that all those things in your life that was hindering you, those walls, that you can start dropping those walls because you're not going to be able to get to where God wants you to go if you got those walls. Yes. See, those walls, see, 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 they stop people, right? Now think about your a fist, right? If I got a fist and I close my fist, nothing can get in, but nothing coming out either. Yeah. And so a lot of people do that with their money, right? They say, okay, I ain't going to let you get my money. Try to get this money out of my hand. Can't get it, can you? Because I got it locked up. You, 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 you get a little too good. <laughs> <laughs> and she used to get my money. She know how to get my money. <laughs> so, so, so I'm going to have to get somebody else next time I do this. But either way it goes, yeah. see, see what happens is, I can't. She can't get it out, but can I get more money in my hand? Mm -hmm. No, I can't. I'm not, I got it locked up like this. I can't get nothing in this. It's too tight. It's hold. I can't get nothing in. So my whole point is, watch those walls. Because you think they're protecting you into some degree they are. But they're also hindering you. Sometimes the same thing that helps you, hurts you. The same thing that moves you forward holds you back and you will never be able to get all that God got for you because you got stuff that's holding you back, amen? But the only way you're going to defeat it is you got to say every single day, God, help me to understand what I'm going through, what you're trying to show me, how you're trying to move in my life, what's going on. But you got to do that on a daily basis. It's called reflection, amen? So if I had a point, I'd say you make sure if you want the walls down in your life, you got to meditate. You got to meditate day and night. You got to always think, what is God doing? How is God doing it? What is God, how I need God to move in my life. I need to meditate, amen? amen. So, so the scripture tells us that Jericho was strangely shut up because of the children of God. <laughs> now, you up there scared of the devil. He actually scared of you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the point I want you to catch in there. It was shut up because they got scared of the children of God. 
See, you was like, man, they doing this, and, and, and the devil just taking it. He busy. He gonna kill me. He gonna hurt me. And you so scared, and you so like timid, and you fight. Oh my God! And what if this man with cancer gonna take me out? And, and this and that, and all this stuff, and I'm gonna be broken. I'm gonna this and that, and all this kind of stuff. But the enemy is trying to attack you because he's scared of you. Can I preach that? Can you understand? He's scared of what you come to bring. He's scared of what you got inside. He's scared of you. So he's doing everything in his power to make you fear. Ooh, yeah. See, yeah. see, that's the biggest thing that's going to stop you from walking in your... That's why people put walls up, because they fear. They got to deal with that fear. You got to deal... Watch this. So, so some people, they scared to be broke, so they always got issues. Every time money come up, they get, you know what I mean? They, they're scared of losing the, their relationship. So every time something come up, they... And, and the walls come up and, and the arguments come and all that other stuff come around. Why? Because all these walls have been built because of past stuff. But the enemy, right? It says Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. And like I told you, none went out, but none went in either. So many times we're looking at the fact that, oh, I'm all right because nobody can come in, but I can't go out either. I'm, I'm shut up. Right. Um, it, it's, it's hurting me. It seems like it's helping me, but it's hurting me. Right. So we got to get rid of those walls. Yes. So I'm speaking to the financial wall that's been holding us back. Amen. The financial uh, incompetency or uh, the financial illiteracy that we've had. I, I, I find that in the name of Jesus, that, that we understand what credit is and how to utilize credit and how to be better inside of that, that we understand what it means to be a bank, that we understand all the different aspects, because there's so many levels of financial literacy, and there's different aspects of it. Some people say, okay, I'm not going to utilize credit. That's fine. That's their way. And if they can do it that way, let them do it that way. But they need to understand what it is. And somebody else said, you know, and some, to, some people say that, and I, I share with somebody. Now, 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 you're going to tell somebody not to utilize credit because they can lose. Well, then it means you need to stop living because you will die. Amen. Somebody missed what I'm trying to say. See, 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 you don't, you don't fear losing. You say, I've got to put myself in the best position to be successful. And I'm going to share something with you real quick. Just, just, just some good stuff from the outside. Y'all gonna, gonna have to pay me for this. Amen? Amen. Is it better to make another $2,000, $5,000, another $10,000 off somebody else's money? Or my own money? So do I, do I want to put my own money? Or do I want to use some credit to be able to do something? You get know what I'm saying? There, there are certain ways to do things, but you make sure you know what you're doing. You about to do your research. You got to check it out. You got to make sure you're doing what you need to do because God is going to bless you. But you got to be brave enough to be who God called you to be. Right? In every aspect. So we want to be able to go in. We want to be able to be blessed. We want to be able to get what God wants for our lives. Amen? Now watch this. It says, and the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given. Well, um, see, they all ain't reading this, right? It says, "See, I have given into thy hand Jericho." Yes. See, a lot of times we trying to fight for stuff that's ours. Amen. The victory is yours. Why you? Why you sitting up there scrapping for it? Why you sitting up there trying to take it away? This is mine. I ain't, I ain't tripping. I'm walking with authority. Where the authority come from? The authority come from the fact that I already know that at the end of this, I win. Amen. At the end of this, I'm good. Amen. At the end of this. Everything gonna be all right. I already won. I already, you know what? You gotta come time. Walk in the walk in the ring like you already won. Amen. Amen. Not because you arrogant, but because you know. Amen. Not because you think you all that, because you all that. Now, how do you know that? Because I'm a king's kid. Amen. The Bible tells me who I am. I'm just saying. Hey, hey Paul said I'm bold in Christ. I'm not bold in Calvin. Not to miss that. I'm bold in Christ. I'm not celebrating how awesome Calvin is. I'm telling you that I got a God that got stand. Don't you know the priest can't do nothing when I die? The priest is directed from God. Amen. I'll not be a prophet. The prophet can't speak until the Bible said, you know, if, if God wars, you know what I mean? Who can but fear? If, 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 God, if God speaks, who can but prophesy? So the prophecy only comes when God speaks. When God says something, God got to do something. Amen? Amen? And so God is so awesome because this is where we got to go. Amen? Amen. Now 
watch, watch this. This says that, 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 that not just the king, but all the mighty men of valor. You know if you break, if you bind the strong man, it's, it's over. Yes. That's why everybody want to come in and they want to lock up the strong man. Yes. They ain't worried about sometimes. Like, I ain't worried about the kids. I'm going to get them later. If I can get the strong man, I got the kids. If I can get the strong man, I got everything else. I ain't worried about it. That's why the enemy going to come here and try to attack me. That's why I thank God for prayer warriors out there. Amen. I know y'all praying for me every day. Amen. Because the enemy wants to do everything in his power to get the strong man. Because of, if he get the strong man, he got everything else. Amen. Yes. Yes. See, the strong man got to be strong enough to be strong in God. In the power. And let God do the power. Let God be the powerful one. Let God be the one that strengthens him. Amen. Amen. Now, 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 this thing is so powerful. Amen. Because it says that ye that, that, that shall compass the city. Right? That means you shall go around the city. Y'all know the compass is. Y'all know you shall compass the city, all you men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus shall you do six days. So, so you got to understand the power was not in the fact that they was walking around the city. Yes. The power was in the fact that they did exactly what God called them to yes. do. Don't y'all understand, God, sometimes God has complicated instructions for a purpose. I just want to see if you're willing to do it. I want to see if you got enough God in you to do exactly what I say. I want to see if you got enough uh, 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 God in you to say, I'm going to just sacrifice and do what God called me to do. But the only time I sacrifice is not because it's a sacrifice, but because God said it. See, that's why the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Because we want to sacrifice. Oh, I gave a thousand dollars. You know what? I'm, I'm watching this now. Now, now, now. We fasted, right? Now watch me come, try to come up with another. Oh, yeah, I fasted for 40 days and I did all that. That God ain't impressed with none of that. Amen? God is impressed with the obedience. If God would have said, just, just walk for a um, uh, hundred days, that don't seem hard, do it? I can walk every day for a hundred days. Walk. Up the street for a hundred days. That ain't that hard, right? God is concerned with us doing what he said do. Now, even when it looked crazy to everybody else, a lot of stuff we do as Christians look crazy. I'm going to tell you, I was in the barber shop, right? They told us, they were just talking different things, you know, about, you know, what you're doing, how you, you know, you know, man, when I meet a woman, ooh, I got to have something. Remember, you know what they're talking about. You know, you know, y'all, right? I said, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What drew me to my wife is because she said I can't have it. Y'all hear where I'm coming from? What drew me to her was the fact that she said I couldn't have it. All right, I'm talking for, like that for a reason. Y'all get yeah, everybody got it. Y'all get it. All right. All right. So, so, so you got to understand that God is more concerned with obedience. And guess what? Sometimes our obedience looks stupid to everybody else. Nowhere in the world, come on, I knew this might be still No Nowhere in the world, uh, um, um, the devil want to do it that way. Nowhere in the world, you know. Nowhere in the world, I would do it that way. Mm -mm, I don't care. I'm going to do what he called me to do. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to do it the way he called me to do it. So, so for me, that in this part, right, God tells them exactly what to do, and I call that a proclamation. So the first thing that happens, I want, if you're going to get past it, you got to meditate. Right? The next thing is proclamation. Now, after proclamation, God tells you what to do, and you, you hear it, right? And, and so, so God, God says it, now you're obedient to it. Then after there is proclamation, then there's this thing called application. So, so every time God speaks to you, you got to do it. Mary said, they said, they said, what are we going to do? She said, whatever he said, do. You do. Now, why is that important? It's important because God is speaking to us. Whatever God say do, that's what we need to do. Now, 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 after application, I want you to read this on yourself. See, most people say after application comes manifestation. It does come eventually. But in this scripture, I saw something that came in before manifestation. And that was celebration. Somebody missed that. See, a lot of times our problem is we want to wait till the battle is over to shout. 
Mm. We want to wait till we win to be victorious. We want to wait till everything is good for us to say, hallelujah, bless the name of Jesus. But God said, don't wait till the battle is over. Shout right now. Can I get somebody to understand that? I don't want you to wait till everything is good. I want you to be shouting and praising God and magnifying God in the middle of your storm. Amen? Amen. See, when they were praising God, the, the walls were still up. When they were shouting, the Bible said, I want you to go around and I want you to be tooting horns like you, like, you, like you got victory. I want you to, at the end of it, shout. The shout did not come after the wind. The shout came before the wind. Can I tell you that the praise should not come after the victory? The praise should come before the victory. Amen. You got to praise God before you win. Amen. You got to praise God before everything is okay. You got to praise God in the middle of the storm. You got to praise God anyhow, anyway. And praise Him like you lost your mind. Don't wait till the battle is over. Praise God right now. When you, when you finally learn how to celebrate, yeah. you'll finally learn that now you can walk in your manifestation. Yeah. A lot of times we wonder when is it going to come? It's going to come after you shout. He said that you got to walk around the city and until you shout. See, you, you look at the verse 17. When verse 17 let you understand that until you shout, then guess what? That's when the victory comes. And verse 20 going to let you know the same thing. You got to learn how to shout. Amen. Come on, I'm going to read that and we're going to be done. Amen? Because I, I, until I, mean, I always tell y'all, I want you to get the word. Amen? Amen? I want you to be able to use the word on Monday. Use the word on Tuesday. See, the word is no good because I'm so excited about it. The word is good because it changes my life. So what does it say? I'm going to read this and I'm out of here. Amen? Amen. 17 says, And the city shall be accursed, even it, and all therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. Now why did she live? Why did Rahab live? Because Rahab was obedient. Can, can I try to try to break this down a little bit? So you gotta understand that everything in your life that does not come in, what word am I looking for? Does not come in in, 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 in agreement with you, God will obliterate it. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? Everything in that city, they did not say, hey, we with y'all. Die. Can I break down the, the, the complexity of what happened? The walls was 28 feet high. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The walls was 20 feet wide. So a lot of times when I imagine the walls falling down, I imagine the walls just coming flat. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? But that ain't what happened. God literally turned those walls into dust. Y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't hear me. God literally turned those walls. How did I know God literally turned those walls? Because there was no way that you can turn over. It's almost like a square. 28 feet high, 20 feet wide. That's almost like a square. If I turn that over, all it's going to do is still be an obstacle. Instead of the obstacle being 28 feet high, it's not going to be 20 feet high. Because I just turned it over. So God turned that stuff into dust. Yes. Can I tell you that what God is going to do in your life is turn that mess into dust? I know it's been hitting you for a long time, but God's turning it into dust. It's been people that have been hitting you for a long time. God's about to turn them into dust. It's been situations that have been stopping you from getting to the next level. God's about to turn it into dust. It's been stuff that's been messing you up. That, 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 that been feel like, I can't get over this. This last hurdle. God's about to turn that into dust. Because you got places to go. You got things to do. And God is not going to let that wall stop you. You're about to win this. Yes. You're about to win this. Yes. I'm encouraging you about to win this. Yes. You're about to win this battle. Amen. You're about to walk into the promised land. But he can't stop you either. Come on, let's give God a praise. Yes, Amen.